Hi Liftoff, my name is Cyan and the documentary is Balancing the Waters. The inspiration is awareness. We want to keep Bali the paradise that it should be. We're working on a follow-up of Balancing the Waters to see if the word has been spread and what needs to be done and what has been done. Uh, we've aired in two places, in Amsterdam and New York. And here is my film. Welcome to Waterbomb Park, a world of excitement and relaxation. Find out why Waterbomb Park is the most fun place in Bali. Do camera man. Look at me. I am looking at you. No, you go look at the lens. Oh, I'm looking, I have to look at the lens. Yeah. Is it all on camera? Yep. That's funny. Tomorrow you can cut what we have today and then use it then. We're, we're, but that's, I mean, we're not going to ever get that on film because I'm going to. Now this season's over, it's almost too late. Bukan saja air untuk diminum, untuk mandi, untuk menyiram pohon, nah. air juga didewakan di Bali. Sebelum tahun 50, tidak ada orang Bali kenal agama Hindu. Yang ada adalah agama Tirta. Tirta itu artinya air, holy water. Agama Tirta di Bali tidak bisa lepas aktivitasnya dengan air. Apa saja upacaranya, apa saja acaranya, harus ada air. The meaning of water is life. Arti, arti air itu kehidupan. Yang kita sebut dengan sumber dari uh, segala kehidupan. Air merupakan pratiti atma. Pratiti atma is like a, the identity of the soul. Do you guys know anything about water in Bali? Yeah, the beach pretty is fucking pretty dirty. dirty. Yeah. Like you go for a surf or something, There's you some, pick up yeah. like a, a handful of garbage. Plastic bags. Yeah. Yeah. Like, the right? waves are like, good, the water's dirt as fuck. Yeah, yeah. dirty. Do you guys keep coming back? Yeah, yeah definitely. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. What's special about Bali? Cheap. Very cheap. cheap. Yeah, cheap. Oh yeah, if you talk about water, yeah, you, you talk about waste. Because waste is polluting the water. Yeah, it's true. It's true, but it's only one piece. In Bali, we have the dry season and the rainy season. A common misconception is we have so much water in the rainy season, we couldn't possibly be running out of water. The problem in Bali is that those underground water systems that we can't see are slowly, slowly becoming depleted. Why? Because we're taking more water out of them than is refilled in the rainy season. How do we know this? We're pretty certain of this because everyone, literally everyone, is drilling deeper. Ah, yang jelas, 6 bulan kemarin ya, benar-benar tidak ada air, maka saya gali lagi, lagi berapa itu? Satu setengah meter. Dari 2,500 lebih sumur dalam yang terdaftar, di seluruh provinsi Bali itu lebih dari 70% itu masih sangat produktif. 30% selebihnya memang sudah krisis. Bahkan ada yang sudah tidak produktif lagi. Nah, itu merupakan tanda-tanda awal dari adanya krisis air global. Pemerintah kalau tidak salah menggembar-gemborkan melarang mempergunakan air bawah tanah. Takut-takut permukaan bumi akan semakin turun kalau tidak salah kan sempat ada ada isu perbincangan seperti itu. Tapi di sisi lain warga kekurangan air. Lantas bagaimana caranya kalau tidak ngambil air bawah tanah?
How long are we going to wait till it's dry? We, I was always looking for someone who we could commit with on a long-term basis, not just on a short-term basis. Now, what a lot of people don't get, or they think we are hypocritical in the sense that we're trying to support Bali's water program, but we are a water park. What we're trying to do is to offset our water. Yeah, yeah. Water park was trying to say water is it a scam of some sort. No, we use this much. We want to replace that. Much. That's what it is. The splash bands in the park. At the end of the day, for the customers, right? They have a deposit. Uh -huh. We ask them if they want to donate the deposit or not. Tapi sekarang kita terkenal untuk jadi water park pertama di dunia yang care dengan lingkungan. And kita ada sangat komitmen sama itu. Kita jadi contoh bukan cuma untuk Bali tapi juga untuk dunia. Jadi sangat penting, sangat sangat penting. Kita percaya dengan Trihita Karana. And kita percaya dengan karma sendiri. Jadi kita nggak mau cuma ambil ambil ambil, padahal nggak kasih balik. Kasihan alamnya. Tri Karana ini secara letter lek itu sebetulnya bahasa Sanskerta. Tri itu artinya tiga, Hita itu artinya sejahtera, prosperous ya mungkin. Terus uh, Karana ini penyebab. Berarti itu adalah tiga penyebab kesejahteraan Anda. Kita berbuat, kita akan menikmati hasilnya. Maka sangat penting artinya yang pertama itu adalah spiritual. Yang kedua ini pawongan. Pawongan ini adalah sosial sistem. Sosial sistem itu bagaimana kita mengatur strata sosial supaya uh, berjalan yang baik. Yang ketiga baru namanya palemahan. Ini environment. Environment ini artefak, jadi artefak fakta-fakta dari hasilnya ini. Spirituality is a connection with the earth. That's what it is. And uh, Trihita Karana involves all the elements. Harmony among nature, harmony among their gods, harmony among people. Obviously in a place like Bali, you don't want to freak out the tourists. We get 10 million tourists coming here every year. 60-70% of the economy here relies on tourism. The government will do everything it can to suppress any word of crisis or problem or whatever. Pariwisata itu maju tidak terlepas dari pertanian. Tanpa pertanian tuh Bali itu saya yakin 20 tahun lagi tidak ada tamu. <laughs> well, Indonesians use 200 liters of water a day. And a tourist can use up to 4,000 to 6,000 liters of water a day. The so guests need to be educated as well. And before they come in the country, for example, a French tourist coming in Bali, he comes from a country where there is no water issue and comes here for a service. They pay like four star, five stars resort. I would take a longer shower as I can. And the tourism industry is responsible for about 60% of water use on this island. They just take and take and take and aquifers aren't capable of refilling themselves. The water level in the aquifers drop, so we see a lot of wells that are becoming saltier and saltier. And the quality of water in many places that hotels are producing are already brackish saline water, the water you would find in mangroves, water that is classified as not healthy to drink or consume. And so then they have to process it by investing a lot of money into energy, into machinery, just so that they can have good water, but at the cost of the environment. And at the end, the locals who are still living in these areas, they're left with shitty water. We are definitely heading towards a water crisis. And by some people's definition, already in one. How far we can take it, I don't know. This is urgent. You know, sustainable tourism development is urgent for Bali. When there's no water here in Bali, the tourists will not come anymore. We have problem with the waste management at the moment in Bali. We only have one central in Denpasar in Serangan, and that is overload already. So the waste is already contaminating the water. You go to the Mother Temple, Basaki, and you go for a big ceremony. There is plastic everywhere. So if it was because of it, it was sacred. How can the Mother's Temple be so contaminated with plastic and not here? A lot of people don't rely on the local source of water, so you have to rely on mineral bottles, and that creates a lot of waste. And that's what's happening with the oceans and the beachside. They put that sign that uh, the plastic was a natural phenomenon. 
Come on. Water is so smell right now. And you can see it in the water like, you know, like some, I don't know what the hell is that. <laughs> Tourists don't want to worry. So we deal with people that don't care and they don't want to be bothered. We get them by the millions every year. Right? Because we know that garbage is a huge problem. I mean, go to the beach this morning, you see plastic straws, plastic bottles, plastic wrappers, you name it. And plastic bags was a, a realistic target that we found um, that we could do as tackle as children, but also just on an individual basis. And change needs to happen, and you don't have to wait for somebody to do it, because you could be that one person that leads it with Bye Bye Plastic Bags. Um, we really speak the minds of our generation and that we really cannot afford to, to do nothing anymore. Hidup itu pilihan, jadi kita harus memilih ya, dan kita pun juga bisa berkontribusi dengan memilih sampah-sampah kita dengan dipilah-pilah. Satu pulau! Dari 2014 itu, sampah kresek mungkin kami udah hampir 50 ton kali udah kami store ke PT Impero Palet. Yang lain-lain kami sementara bekerja sama dengan pemulung. Yang pertama, lewat jalur non-formal, yaitu pemulung. Private sector, di mana di situ ada pelaku waste management, ada pemulung lapak bandar yang informal. Atau kita bahasakan itu private sector lah. Artinya secara bisnis, waste management juga berkecimpung di situ. Itu satu bisnis yang baik. Tiga, dua, satu. Tepuk tangan yang meriah dan selamat untuk peluncuran dropping box sampah kemasan. Luar biasa, jadi kita bisa lihat di sini dropping boxnya ada dua. Yang di sebelah kanan adalah untuk sampah kemasan plastik dan di sebelah kiri ini adalah untuk sampah kemasan karton ya. Karena saya melihat ini cantik sekali, dia tinggi dan langsing seperti saya nih kayaknya ya. <tik> Ready. I might just start with the water bomb star story from the beginning. I am part of this global tourist issue in Bali. Mass growth, mass population. But if I'm going to take and be profitable and win and stuff like that, let me do my part in giving back. Well, at least as much as I can. It's because I have this potential, I have this power, so to speak, to make some sort of difference. From a business standpoint, it is my responsibility to be aware of how every drop of water can be reduced. The assumption is that water parks, with the term water, uses a lot of water. Yes, it is a given it uses water. What most people don't assume is that the water park uses less water than a golf course, which is an open circuit system. Now, with golf courses, water is either absorbed or evaporated, so a constant feed is necessary. System pengairan atau system perawatan air di waterbomb, kita sistemnya sirkulasi. Tidak ada penggantian baru ataupun dibuang. Semua air yang ada di taman kita, itu kita sirkulasi menggunakan teknologi modern. The water park's water system can be compared to the human body. A lazy river, a river that circulates for 250 meters in the park, is the artery. This is where water is distributed to the water slides as well as receiving water from the water slides. This system applies for 85% of our water attractions. The remaining 15% is still a closed circuit system. However, the only difference is that it doesn't go through or bypass the lazy river. We will find a way to create a water park that is to an extent net zero in its water consumption, in its energy consumption, and in the waste it produces. Kalau hijau itu harus sampah basah. Sampah sampah dapur, kalau yang merah, satu putih itu harus sampah sampah kering. Semua sampah yang ada di waterbomb Bali, sama NMM juga, itu untuk sampah uh, organiknya akan dijadikan untuk kompos. Kita tidak akan membuang sampah lagi uh, ke CPA yang ada di sulung itu. So no waste goes to a landfill. Water that gets extracted gets put back into the ground. So we can create a framework that is environmentally friendly. Yang menjadi kebutuhan pokok di pertanian itu kan air. Bagaimana orang bisa melestarikan subak tanpa air? 
Suba itu adalah salah satu contoh aktivitas yang sudah ada sejak abad ke-9 yang masih ada di Bali dan sudah diakui sebagai World Heritage. Do you know what the Subak did? They replicated the movements of nature. Allow the water to dictate its own destination and it can transform and make this, complete, this island a complete garden. Organisasi tradisional itu tujuannya untuk ya menjaga lingkungan agar lebih baik. Tapi sekarang dengan Perkembangan teknologi, kemajuan teknologi itu sudah mulai berubah. It's very important uh, for people to understand that water cycles are actually very quick if there isn't uh, plants involved to slow down the water, help the water infiltrate into the Uh, ground and into the soil and into the subsoil and in the, into the layers of rock under the soil. When it does rain, those trees are going to be able to hold that water. It's not just going to flow as overland flow, but it will be able to be held further up to the surface. It creates a hydrological cycle. It takes up water, it expels water, which triggers rain, and it falls on the trees, and, and the cycle, so to say, continues. Planting a bamboo clump is like planting a water holding tank that is 5,000 liters full of water. Because of development, because of building up cities, urbanization, a lot of that water that falls in these areas does not have a good chance at returning back to the aquifers, to the groundwater. Bali is now gotten to that point where the population and the tourism population that comes in has demanded for such an amount of water and it's not only drying out our aquifers, it is truly drying out our landscapes and that is the first step towards desertification. It's very easy for large businesses, resorts, hotels to just drill a well here and cover it up and no one will ever find it, not report what they're consuming, what they're taking out. You know, the government isn't really taking the time to police illegal water extraction. The economic and the, and the ecological conversation has to become the same conversation. It cannot be two. It's like, I make my money and then I think about the environment. No, that doesn't work. We have to think about how to make money in a sustainable way, in a way that doesn't uh, degrade any of our environmental systems. You know, it's... it's uh, It's an age-old concept, but we're still not doing it. But what makes Bali, Bali? The culture, the people, the essence. That's what makes Bali, Bali. And landscape-wise, it's beautiful too. But the rice fields exist because of what? Cultural thing. A lot of people coming in like the late 2000s saw Bali or semi already developed. They didn't see it. They don't have that connection or that love for the island. The whole concept of Trihita Karana, which is embedded in that culture, will disappear. Where's he going to go? Yeah. Yeah, see How much freedom of speech do you have? I don't. I kind of have to get this documentary. I think you can tell what I have to say. I mean, otherwise I'd be deported. The estimate demand, 80,000 liters more or less for a five-star hotel, which is 31 Olympic-sized swimming pools, is outstripping supply. This, combined with climate change, land subsidence, a declining quality of water, a falling water table, and seawater intrusions contribute to the decrease of available water in Bali. Rice farmers must now compete for water alongside every other human on the island. Dulu itu tidak ada orang yang malam-malam mencari air. Istilahnya apa? Saling curi dengan temannya bagaimana kita bisa tidak gagal panen gitu ya. Karena airnya kecil kita kan kalau bagi pecah semua sama-sama dapat gitu ya kan. Ya sama-sama kering, sama-sama tidak panen itu. Maka di situ ada istilah siapa yang rajin itu yang bisa menghasilkan gitu. Memang peraturan subak udah boleh dikatakan diabaikan begitu saja zaman sekarang. 
kalau pariwisata itu dikelola dengan benar, saya yakin tuh bagus. Tapi di satu sisi, saya sering melihat ya, di pinggir-pinggir sungai, ngambil air di musim kering gitu ya, dengan mesin untuk mau nyiram kebun. Di ini, ini dari air petani yang diambil, sehingga petani itu lebih parah lagi dia. You know that no. That's all the pipes going up, going up to the balik bukit. Because on the other side of this is a huge rain shadow. Begitu pertanian tidak ada, yang terancam juga kan apa? Perwisata juga terancam kan? Kalau misalnya orang ke Bali dari Amerika, Inggris dan lain sebagainya ke Bali ingin melihat bangunan ya mungkin di Amerika lebih megah lagi bangunan kan? Lebih megah lagi. Orang ke Bali itu kan saya yakin dia ingin melihat bagaimana aslinya Bali kan gitu. Tahun 70-an hampir semua wisatawan bilang bahwa Bali ini pariwisatanya itu adalah Hijau royo-royo, green color. Kalau sekarang, kondisi pariwisata Bali ini hitam. Padahal di statistik, setiap tahun ini 2012, setiap tahun turis itu naik. Sekarang ini, yang datang ke Bali itu adalah turis yang kita tidak tahu. Turis yang tidak terlalu menghargai budaya Bali. Everyone demanding, demanding water as if it's an infinite resource. It's not. We need to get something physical going. So you guys have to do two things, restructure and reallocate your budget. If we don't start, we will never start. The money will fuck off too. Bali will always be part of my life. I mean, I freaking conceived here. I grew up here. I have more Balinese culture than I have French or Italian or anything else that I am. Oh, my Lord, I cannot tell you uh, the utopia, the paradise that we grew up in. It's, it's beyond your wildest comprehension, you know. Uh, because it wasn't just a visual thing, it wasn't just an environmental Eden, it wasn't just a cultural Eden, it was everything. It was all of it, all in one. You know, going down the street, uh, you know, and you see a beautiful banana tree, you can pick it, but before you pick it, a beautiful lady will already offer you that banana, you know? In about 2006 is when I started noticing it. Slowly, traffic, plastic everywhere, the rat race formed, the concrete jungle solidified itself, and you couldn't escape it. It wasn't like I would be driving or going anywhere and be like, oh, look at this, you know, paradise, the palm trees, the frangipani flowers. No, this, this image, this nostalgia I had with a kid is fading. We want to make sure this island has become sustainable tourism development not sustainable destruction through tourism development. Hanya pemerintah yang punya kapasitas kan kemampuan. Yeah. Kalau kita kita ini apa kan? Membikin aturan tidak bisa kan? And the and what the government needs to do and hopefully it can do and is starting to do with social media and the internet is uh, explain the problem and break it down into 
bite-sized pieces and bite-sized solutions that we can all do. Well, I've been here 28 years and the government isn't doing it. They're not doing it properly, they're not policing it. So how do you ma motivate businesses to change, to become an agent of change? Saya ingin subak ini tetap ada. Harus diperjuangkan. Gitu. Petani itu tidak usah dikasih uang. Gitu ya. Kasih air aja dia. Tidak usah ngasih uang. Reducing water usage in all reality reduces costs. And hence increases profits. There is a motivation for us to save in more than one facet. Solutions are everywhere. If we're going to be known to be this eco-sustainable water park, let us be copycatted not just for water park, for everything else. So, ding, 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 then it goes and it dominoes effects. Watch then maybe another company, which I do not want to name, will say, hey, this is what Water Bomb's doing. Hey, let's do, let's one-up them. Okay. Do it, one-up me. Mm -hmm. One-up me, man, take me. This initial movement will grow. If it doesn't, we're, we're done for, but I will refuse to believe that that will ever happen. I, I'm, I'm sure we will find a way to save all this. I think we are all in this together, you know. The, the, the environmental problem in Bali is the global community's problem. It's not just the Balinese problem. Uh, it's everyone who loves Bali must also appreciate the problems here. People need to wake up. Wake up. I'm not asking you to be like me. I'm not asking him to be like you. I'm asking you just to realize what we need to do collectively and then what you can do individually. What we need to do collectively is very straightforward. Take care of this.